Hey guys, welcome back to another perfume review. I'm your host Harry and in today's episode we're going to do something special. We're going to unbox a very interesting and unique perfume together. Now, we're still in those weird times where we can't see our friends, we can't really go outside and uh, have fun like we used to. We, it's not the time for the sexy club scents, it's not the time for the perfumes that we wear so others can enjoy as much as we. It's a very interesting time in our life where we pretty much are to ourselves. We can't even see our family who are in a different country or different city. So what can we do? Well, we are can do some reflection, we can uh, choose to have fun by ourselves and do some interesting stuff. And much like reading books and watching movies that you never see and having all this free time for yourself, the same can be applied to perfumes. And maybe we can explore something interesting, something new, something that's not a dumb read, something that's not your club sense, but something that makes you happy, something that uh, makes you think, something that's outside the box, unique, interesting, full of identity. Now, what do you wear in those situations? I bet you have your own stuff and I would love to know them. For this episode, we are going to take a look in this perfume. Now, for you who don't know what this is, it's called Uner d'Apogee Violet. Now, I hope I didn't butcher it. Uh, it's from Maison Violet, established in 1827. Now, this house was established back then. It died and uh, it was brought back to life by three enthusiasts in 2018. This specific perfume was made in 1932. Well, not the one I hold, obviously, but the smell is very, very close to a big extent from what I know to the old original perfume from that house. So we're gonna smell a classy scent from 1932. Sounds interesting, right? So grab your coffee, grab your tea, your favorite type of uh, liquor or spirit, sit down, hang out with me, and we're gonna talk, smell, unbox the perfume. So let's take a look at the box. This is the box. It's a big box. Interesting and nice feel. Very small, uh, soft and sweat-like. We're gonna remove this and this is the box as you can see here is the name the logo and we're gonna open it and take a look what's inside this is the perfume the inside is this soft sweat like texture very classy and let's take a look in the bottle very nice classy throwback to the old school perfume bottles that i love here's the sticker you can see it has the uh b nice cup that's going where the color is yellow honey like gold um, color now here's why i love bottles like this there's nothing special you might think but i really dislike this new mentality with perfumes where they look like toys one million and all that kind of stuff i just don't like them in my head from the time i was young uh, when i would think of a perfume and i would see perfumes that older people had like my mother and uh, my sister and my grandfather uh, my grandmother the, the bottles the bottles look classy and that's what i had in my head perfume is an accessory something classy something that you put on you go to uh, a gathering to an event you smell good you, you put nice clothes i never um had the thought that you put a perfume with normal clothes like uh, your jeans or like whatever your tracksuit I always imagined perfumes going alongside with nice clothes. That's perfume in my head. I still cannot you know, remove that notion. So I love the throwback to old school perfumes. And this is old school as old school gets. So I love it. I really like it. I really love presentations like this. And the color, it's very interesting. Very honey-like, interesting yellow color. So. For this one, I'm not gonna use a tester strip. I'm gonna 
use my skin because I want to take a really good close look at it. From the cup, I can totally get a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit very interesting uh, kind of um, uh, scent. So let's take a look at the sprayer. Whoa, that's pretty cool sprayer right there. Nice. I've already dried a tiny bit. Ooh, interesting. I'm gonna let you know the notes. You have hay, tobacco, suede, casmeran, mimosa, iris, leather, ambroxan, sage, lebdanum, atlas, cedar. Now you might ask yourself, hay, the note hay, right? Here's the first and interesting thing, but before I go to how this smells because it's very interesting on its own. If you never told me that this has hay in it, I would have never guessed it. Not because it doesn't work in my head, but because it's such an out there type of note that I wouldn't necessarily go there to think about it. And unfortunately, modern perfumes are to blame for that because they use the same thing again and again and again, and you constantly just go in that route where you pretty much know exactly what's in there because you smelled it before. But in this one, the funny part is that now that I know that note, I can totally pick it immediately. And it's prominent. And it, that's weird, right? Hay has a prominent note uh, working alongside, alongside the other notes, but works. In fact, it works so well in a very interesting way because once you smell it, the first spray immediately, you get a little bit of herbal um, vibe, like earthy herbal green vibe right here. Alongside it, you have a bit of sweetness, underwhelming sweetness, not prominent, on the back, honey-like uh, sweetness, not too syrupy, but honey-like sweetness. Interesting. And then the hay, alongside the sweet, note that comes to your nose immediately when you smell it creates this dry dry vibe like if i could let you understand it's sweet but there's something pulling that sweetness down and that's the hay there's this dry down that creates alongside the sweetness super interesting very unique the more you smell it uh, you can feel the tobacco and it creeps alongside the sweetness and the softness of the customer. Um, that's why one of the first things that I thought when I smell it was soft, sweat-like scent. That's the feeling that I get when you smell something and you get the texture, the texture of the perfume. If, if, it, was a, if it was a piece of clothing, what texture would that perfume have? What color would it have? You know, the so images on your head and it totally has sweat-like uh, vibes and that's before I even uh, learned that there's like this Casmeran uh, type uh, note in it. So we have sweat, leather, Casmeran in it. So that's how you know you have this soft, alluring type of sexiness, but classy sexiness. We're talking about a sexy dress and uh, or a sexy suit and tie type of sexiness. Alluring, that's the word, keep it. Alluring. There's nothing uh, too provocative about it. There's nothing uh, that will pretty much overpower anything else. And that's very interesting when a blend of a mixture is so well-rounded and there's not really an edge to it. There's not particularly one note that will overpower anything else when I smell it. In fact, it works really well in multiple ways. Uh, the softness, the sweat-like softness of the Cosmoran and the um, sweat uh, working great with the uh, leather and the tobacco. And then we have the sweetness working great with hay, with mimosa, with the wood notes, where it doesn't really let that sweetness overpower anything else, just keeping it down and works great. And if you're a fan of perfumes like uh, Tobacco Vanilla from Tom Ford, you will definitely enjoy this 100%. Now, when I say something like that immediately, I know people create images in their head of like, oh, this is very similar, but no, 
let me help you out a little bit. Uh, if you love the back of an L from Tom Ford, you will love this because it has the vibe. It has the sweetness with the tobacco. It has the sweetness with a bit of the sexiness in there. So if you love this type of combinations, you will love this. The difference is tobacco vanilla is if someone has a really nice expensive cigar and blowed smoke and it's all over your neck and your um, clothes and it's very enjoyable as it has like this sexiness, this uh, classy, this uh, interesting night out type of scent. This one is a little bit more sweet. The tobacco is on the background, it's not as prominent as tobacco vanilla, where the sweetness of tobacco vanilla is on the background creeping in. This one is more sweet, less tobacco, but works great together and creates this aura around you where you are in a smoky type environment. And the leather in there just works magnificent with those two scents. That's just taking away the hay, taking away the mimosa, taking away iris, taking away all those other great scents. We're just walking, talking about this specific aspect if you love tobacco vanilla. So you will enjoy this, I know that for sure. It's the first second that I smelled it. When you spray it, it's very interesting. Strains, that's a good word for it. Strains, if someone smells it on you, they will need a second to wrap their head around these ideas of this perfume. It's not a dumb ritz by any type of imagination. Uh, it's very interesting and unique in the type of way that... Is it new? No. Is it outside the box? I wouldn't say that. Uh, in fact, this is old school, but the funny part is when something starts here and we do a full circle, it becomes new again. From all these new releases of perfumes, it's pretty much the same thing again and again. And you don't really find uh, something interesting anymore. You really need to search for the something special, for the something uh, interesting. And that's how things are, because the market's oversaturated and makers choose specific stuff to put out. You saw this with the blue phase, you saw this uh, with uh, uh, Tonka bean phase, you saw this with the wood phase of perfume. So what is else there to explore? So instead of looking in the future, maybe we need to look in the past. And this is a great throwback from the bottle, from the history, from the presentation, from what it tries to be and what is in the end of the day is really old school, classy perfume that will take you back into places that you've been if you're an older age or that you want to be if you're a younger age. If you want to look a specific way with a nice dress, with another suit, with a nice dresser, looking very classy, being in a classy environment, but you can't be either by uh, design of the situation that we're in right now or because you don't find yourself often in those situations, but you love that idea, you love this image, you love um, this setting, you will just simply smell this again and again and again in something that you will wear and will transport you to those settings and ideas and images. Uh, so who can wear this? I can totally see uh, people from 40 and up will love this because it will transport them either to places that they used to wear something like that or they smelled something like that or they know a family member that smelled like this and it's not dated because pretty much you only smelled it once from someone. It's not something that you smelled so much that it becomes passé. In fact, it becomes unusual because it's a different era type of scent. It's a dip, different period, different mindset, and that makes it interesting. We don't have this anymore. If you're younger, you should try. That's a good word again. Try. You should try to wear this because it's interesting and people in your age, they will be mesmerized from something like this because they never smelled something like this. And they will ask you, what is this? What is this? And you will tell them. And that's the magic of perfumes, to tell people of your perfume, of, of your signature scent. And, and then 
once they know the perfume and they know you and they can just put those two together it creates your personality and who you are and it's a great choice if you if your personality can carry something like this it's a great choice unusual out of the box old school not dated not passe not cliche very interesting very classy very smooth and interesting and the notes are just great and they smell the part that's a good thing they smell the part it's not like i tell you there's hay in it and you don't smell it in fact i'll tell you there's hay in it you will smell and you will smile and say oh my god i get it that's the magic of this perfume i don't know if there's more to say i know that you should get some samples from this company as i got uh, a bit more of them this probably is one of my favorite does it worth the money because it is a bit pricey does it worth the money in a world where you go out there and you spend money in one million and creeds and um Savaz. yeah let's not joke ourselves this it's a safe bet that it's a really good perfume if you're a collector this hangs in your collection it's amazing unique and interesting if you want something special for going outside from your other to enjoy with by yourself with your other half it's amazing if you need something interesting that maybe you won't even wear it that much but you respect the hell out of it because of what it was and what they revived and brought back to the market you will enjoy it you won't enjoy it if you just want the top 10 sexiest perfumes or the top 10 perfumes that women love uh, i don't know what you're doing in that video there's like 3000 other reviewers who will satisfy your need but if you want something special and if you are special that's a good thing to think are you special are you unique is your personality uh, something that will sign and uh, make people come closer and talk to you and learn more about you and your accessories emphasize that alongside your perfume if you're the type of person i see no reason for you to at least try something like this and i'm gonna leave it like that try smell it and enjoy it because it's interesting and unique and i know i said those words again and again and again but that's you know it's an unboxing and those are my first impressions and those are the words that uh, created in my head by the scent coming from my nose to my brain and through words I try to explain to you what you get from this so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you had fun and the most important thing I hope you try I hope you try to go out there get stuff learn stuff find stuff because you're too unique to be like everyone else you're too unique to smell be dressed look talk walk just be like everyone else and i know you love your dumb rich scents i love them too but in times like this and in times in, in general maybe we need to express ourselves a little bit more and find more we search for stuff and in the same way we search more about ourselves and what we learn more about what we like, what we don't like, who we are, who we want to be. And sometimes mainstream and, you know, maybe doesn't cut it. Sometimes. I'm going to leave you with that. Have a great day, great night, depending where you are. Have fun. Leave a comment, subscribe, or don't. Live your life. I'm going to see you in another video, guys. Take care. Thank you very much for everything. Bye-bye.